about five or six years ago, I decided I wanted to put together a Commodore 64 system. The system was very influential to me as a kid. It's pretty much what started my IT career. Um, and I had used emulators over the years, but it just wasn't the same. I wanted to have the hardware again. So I went about on places like eBay and even local places like Craigslist looking for pieces here and there. I was hoping that making a video would help out anybody who was uh, looking to go down a similar path. There are a lot of storage options and modern peripherals for the Commodore 64. Uh, the scene is still very vibrant. A lot of people are still coming out with things for the Commodore 64, including games, software, devices. Um, and I, I've purchased a few over the years and I wanted to go over those really quick. Um, I plan on doing more videos more specifically about each peripheral, but I just want to give a quick overview in case um, you're looking to get into it. So the first thing you're going to want to buy, of course, is a Commodore 64. I bought uh, two or three of them on eBay when I was first starting to kind of piece together the ideal system for me. I wanted a very clean case uh, and keyboard. Um, I wanted the old style SID chip. Um, but anyway, you can usually find them ranging in price from anywhere from $25 to $150 on eBay, depending on their condition. Um, you want to pay attention to the power supplies. They were notorious for failing on the original Commodore 64s. You want to make sure you get a good, solid working power supply. Um, other than that, depending on your skill level and how much you want to clean it up will depend on the price. Um, I've gotten them as low as $25 where they were pretty dirty but worked pretty well. Um, another thing you want to do is look at your video options. When I, when I was piecing together systems five or six years ago, I bought or I, I received a uh, 1702 Commodore monitor and it, it took up a lot of space and the, the picture rolled a lot and I couldn't fix it. So then I went and I wanted to try to ex explore ways I could use a flat panel LCD like the one you see in the picture, uh, which saves a lot of space. So I basically bought two different cables on eBay. I bought an S video cable and I bought a component cable or I'm sorry, composite cable. And they both work great. Uh, the one I ended up using is the S video port. And as you can see, the screen looks great. It's nice and crisp. Um, I haven't had any issues at all with the video on this or sound. Um, and then, then you just want to start looking in the storage option. If you want to be more nostalgic and go for uh, the kind of original experience, you can grab one of the 1541 floppy drives. I have a couple of them in the garage for the um, rare time that I want to just boot up on regular floppy floppy disk. Um, it, it, if you ever own a Commodore 64, the disk times are brutally slow unless you have something like Jiffy DOS or fast load. Um, so that's something to consider there are many modern storage options which use sd cards compact flash and i'll i'll go over a couple of those options but as you can see this system the video and sound works well it's one of my favorite games called paradroid on the commodore 64 um, but as you can see the colors are bright everything's working really well um, anyway, let's go into storage options next. So let's go over a few of the storage options for the Commodore 64. This is the first one I ever bought. It's called an IDE 64. Uh, compact flash card goes in the top. Um, and then it goes into the cartridge port on the Commodore 64. Be a little tricky to get in there anyway this it was okay for when i first bought it 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 doesn't have a broad compatibility with much so multi-disc games that you might want to run have to be patched um it, it really isn't a great device uh there's a lot better options that are more modern 
Uh, one very popular one right now is the SD2 IEC. It comes in a lot of different versions. It takes an SD card. It derives its power from the cassette port. So you plug it in over here. And then you just plug in a cable into your disk drive or IEC port on the Commodore, and then it plugs into the back of this. The, this is a very popular option. It's very, it's relatively inexpensive. I think you can get them for around fifty or sixty dollars. Um, it it is compatible with much more than the IBE sixty four, but it's not totally compatible. It doesn't emulate any of the oddities or uh, disk operating system that's on the. Um, well, it, it it does emulate the disk operating system. It, the it, it doesn't emulate the 1541 floppy drives very well, so you do get a lot of compatibility problems. Uh, Multi-disc can be kind of a pain in the butt. It does support it, but you have to use a special file that you put uh, at the root of the SD card so that you can do disk swapping. It's called a little swap file. So it's a, it, it's a pretty good solution. It, it won't play anything with copy protection or... Uh, fa a lot of fast loading routines throw it off quite a bit. Um, I got this one from uh, Jim Brain's retro site. Um, you can Google that and look it up. Uh, it's called Retro Innovations. Um, overall, it's a decent solution, um, especially if you don't want to spend a lot of money um, up front. The last option I have is the 1541 Ultimate 2 cartridge. Um, it plugs into the cartridge port, so it does use up your cartridge port, but one of the nice things about it is it does do cartridge emulation. Um, it, it, um, it, it'll it load tape programs, which the SD2 IEC won't do. Um, it, it does emulate a 1541 drive very well, so you have very, very good compatibility with it. In fact, over the last four years, I've I've had one. I haven't had a single program that didn't work with it. Um, it 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 works very well, and it has a lot of little handy features like a uh, SID player, um, just a lot of neat stuff with it. So it it really is a great option. It it really very rarely ever comes out of my Commodore 64. I use it um, all the time. Uh, runs very well. Um, so once you plug it in, you do, it does still plug into your IEC port. Let me do that real quick. So you plug that in there, and then when you boot up, I don't know if you can see that real well. I'll try to center that better. Comes up with a menu system. I I am uh, emulating the action replay cartridge, or using the image of the cartridge, I should say. It's not emulating it. Um, here you can go into the fast load. You press a button. If you can see that there's a there's a three buttons on that cartridge. You can press the middle one. And it takes you to a menu system where you can load uh, any program you want or cartridge, which is handy. So you can like go into this cartridge 
and it will flash a new cartridge immediately. This is the game Berserk. So overall, it's a very handy feature. It's probably the best Commodore 64 storage option on the market right now. Um, and that's called the 1541 Ultimate 2. So I wanted to go over a couple of the other peripherals real quick that I have. Um, I'll, I'll go in more detail in future videos on these. This is a ethernet card for the Commodore 64. It allows you to go on the internet, um, connect to BBSs on the internet, connect to the special Commodore services, uh, chat rooms, uh, IRC. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do with this thing. It comes in very handy. I got that at Retro Innovations as well. Here is a serial card. Uh, so that you can connect to a serial modem of, of some sort, so you can tell that into systems. You can use this with the terminal program to connect to BBS systems. Um, it comes in very handy as well. Let's see. This is a what is called a Messiah cartridge. It gives you a lot of different um, music programs for creating SID. Um, music files. It has a MIDI port, as you can see, so you can use a MIDI controller, a MIDI keyboard with it. Um, that's a lot of fun. And this is a called a Comet 64. Um, it has a serial port on it as well, Ethernet. It allows you to connect to some of the services on the internet, such as CommodoreServer.com. Um, there's, a, they run some chat rooms there that you can connect with the Comet. Um, that's, uh, gives you a lot of options there too. And of course the best reason to have a Commodore 64 is to play the huge library of games. There are thousands of games for the Commodore 64. You can play it for years and years and always find something new to play. Not to mention there are a ton of people making new games these days. So let's start a new game. This one's called Bruce Lee. It's one of my favorite games on the Commodore 64. I used to play it all the time as a kid. Drop on him. Ooh. Oh, he got the drop on me. Damn. This game has excellent sprite detection. Missed that lantern. The goal is to grab all the lanterns on each level and then a door or some way to get past the level open, you can get to the next level. By the way, the Commodore 64 used standard Atari style joysticks. I'm using one called the Arcade, which is a, I don't know if this one was available in the United States or not. A friend of mine shipped it to me from overseas. It's been a while since I've played this. I'm a little rusty. Oh, 
Oh. Ah. should be able to go back and a little door opens. Yeah, you see that little door on the bottom? Then I go, and I'm on level two. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, thanks for watching the video.